Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to Demo Palooza. So the product we're already talking about today is really about the notion of independence, right? It's really, really about providing the teams, the workers, the ability to diagnostic and understand the issues by themselves without relying on the data engineering team, without taking a dependency on the platform team, right? To be able to truly understand what is causing the slowness in your queries. So let's take a look at the product itself. This is what we're launching this year called Data Analytics Studio. What this product does is it will show you every single query you have ran in your cluster. So what I will do is let's take Tableau, for example. I have a very simple worksheet built up here. I'll switch to one of those worksheets. Total of flights per year. Very, very simple worksheet. Very simple aggregation query. I run this query. Let it refresh. So it's not executing query. What I can do now is I can go into the product itself. right? What's cool about this is if you have a Hive server running within your cluster today, any workload that connects to that cluster, right? whether you're using Tableau, you're using Cell, you're using some Python scripts, we're able to capture that. Right, so what's really cool about this is you can click into any of those and see the kind of query being generated by the underlying platform. Whatever tooling you're using, you're able to see that. From there, what we have is we'll show you what is the execution plan of the query itself. We'll show you the configurations you have, the time taken by individual stages of the query itself, and also what's really, really cool about the product itself is this top portion of it. So let me zoom in a little bit. If you read the top portion of this, right, the recommendation in here, those are plain English recommendations generated by analyzing the queries you have just ran. So things like you know, you're using the wrong file format, you're doing a join on the wrong data type, right? all those will show up directly. So things like in this case, we're missing statistics on one of those tables. We actually generate the query you need to create the statistics. So all you need to do is just copy, paste this into any query tool which you have, as long as you have permission, run this, and your worksheet or your query will just run way faster. So this is one part of the product. Other portions of the product are really the ability for you to go in and then create queries on top of this. Right? So we build a query editor directly into the product itself. So a lot of the things that we didn't quite have in the past are already here. So I can do, for example, select full autocomplete right, with all the columns, all the functions you need from here. Right? They are all showing up as part of the query editing experience. So from there, one more thing I want to show you guys is this. See this. OK, let's zoom out. Zoom out a little bit. One of the things that people have frustration with today is really in the large organization, you have a database with a few thousand tables. Right? If you're a DBA, if you're an admin, it's very hard for you to go in and understand what is the usage pattern. What are the hotspots of your database? So the product that we have built today here will aggregate all your query history, understand you know, how many data has been read from the disk, how much has been streamed through the network, and understand what are the patterns people are using to query their data. If you look at the links here on the screen here, right, any of those links, those links are joins between tables. And none of those joins are generated based on predefined schema. This is very, very important. Right? Every single link you see here is generated based on how people are querying the data set. It's inferred based on people's query patterns. So you can have a lens into how people are using a large distributed infrastructure and be able to make optimization on top of that. The other part of it is we also ship something called a join report. Right? The question is, how do you get a comprehensive view of all the relations in the large database based on some of the earlier data that we have done. right? So things like you know, what are the intermediate table being generated, what keys are being used together, how much data are being generated or used in that join. Those are being visualized on screen. 
And as a database admin, you can go in and very easily understand, again, what is the usage pattern? How do you optimize for this? Right? So all those are being built into this product itself. And we're, uh, we're releasing this as part of the data plane pl uh, service platform. So let's take a look at uh, other parts of it. All right, so let's uh, switch back to the slides. Cool. All right, so one of the things I want to talk to you guys today is, you know, how do we bring all those experience from on-premise into the cloud, right? Because a lot of companies today are doing that digital transformation by bringing their on-premise data into the cloud. How do we bring this experience into the cloud? Is we're going to show you guys a quick demo of something called EDW as a service. Let's go back to the demo, please. So built into part of this tool, as you guys have seen earlier, right? Hortonworks gives you guys the tooling to give you guys the on-ramp into the cloud. But once you get to the cloud, how do you run a workload? How do you launch your clusters? Today, when we talk to our customers, we tell them, you know, those are the things you're, you need to do to launch your cluster in the cloud, right? So it's a very, very, very simple 10-step process, right? So I want to analyze my data, right? Everyone wants to do this. But before you can do that, you have to provision a cloud environment, deploy HTTP, install Hive, right? Go through a lot of things to make that happen. It's a very, very long journey. It takes hours, weeks, like months sometimes. So what we're really introducing today is Enterprise Data Warehouse as a service. It's a full serverless solution that Hortonworks provides that allows you to directly run Hive workloads against your data sitting in S3 or any cloud buckets and be able to connect your Tableau and Excel workload directly to your cloud data sets. EDW service is compatible, right? So all your Hive workloads today still works in the cloud because it's basically Hive. It's very performant. We have optimized all the query engine itself to work natively against cloud data using our AP as a caching layer. It's very fast to deploy. So I'll show you guys, right, instead of taking hours to deploy this, it takes seconds to deploy it. It's highly flexible. It's decoupled the compute and storage, so you're no longer bound by how many EC2 instances you have. It's cloud native, as I mentioned earlier, right? With full security support, with Ranger policy tagging, with Atlas integration, right? With all the goodness you have on HTTP available in the cloud as a serverless experience. So going back to the demo a little bit, if you look at the data sets, okay, let me get rid of the jumping icons first and come back to this. So this is a cloud bucket, right? Oh, actually, I have to stop the PowerPoint. There we go. <clears throat> this is a cloud bucket, right? This is directly sitting in S3. S bunch of org files sitting in S3 right now. So what we have is what we can do is importing this into a new data warehouse. So in here, I'm saying let's create a new data warehouse. I have some pre-scripted stuff I can copy and paste, right? This is the bucket. So warehouse, let's just say flights, data lake, let's pick San Francisco, and then go next. So we pick S3 as storage provider, provides its location, right? The bucket you guys just saw. The database name, let's do flights, and let's do fully manage. What this has done is it pulls in all the tables from the cloud bucket and analyzes those tables and shows you what are the data and columns available. It also shows you the sample data from each of the columns, right? And you're like, oh, I'm ha not happy with certain data types. You know, this one looks wrong. I can go in and change the data type mapping. And once you're done with that, I'm happy with that, go to the next stage. It asks you for what is the database name, default location. I'm not changing that staging location. I'm just keeping it as is. Security governance, right? As we have talked earlier, it has full integration with Ringer. Right, so in this case, I can put in whatever policy I already have. I can put in the tags I have. As part of the creation process, we basically tag those data sets directly with that. And then I click on Next, and then do a confirmation. It shows me how much data is needed. And then I do Finish, and I'm done. Right? This is a new data warehouse just created 
in the cloud mapped to your cloud storage. And you may have question is like, how do I run queries against this? Right? Because this is basically a metadata mapping. There's no like compute resource attached to that. So I can click on the instances. I can pick any of those running clusters I have out there and connect them directly against a uh, directly against this data lake. Or alternatively, I can go in there and create one and pick either a pre-configured group or pick one of those like uh, flexible clusters and then run them against the cluster. So I can pick this medium. And in the background, it spins up the containers. It runs the monitoring. It works with the underlying cloud provider to provision the CPU and memory resources. And then go from there. I hit Connect. I'm landing directly back into query editing. Right? And now I'm able to basically pick a data warehouse and be able to start running query directly against that. That was within a few seconds. You're no longer provisioning Ambari. You're no longer dealing with cluster setup. There's no tuning. Everything is preset for you. So that's all. Thank you all for the demo.